you. It's nice to see you. Where are you recording today? Today, I am recording from formerly Fuse as of two days ago, now Caddo in Prosper. So it's pretty exciting. I think this is one of the first, and you can correct me if I'm wrong because you know more than I do as long as you've been in the industry. I think this is the first full building co-working space that is traded hands from one co-working operator to another. Wait, full co-working space. What do you mean by that? So it's 40,000 feet yeah. of a, a 40,000 square foot building, 100% co-working. You mean, oh, the whole building is. You don't mean yes. 100% flex desks. You just mean- 100% co-working. Yeah, wow. Transferred to another owner that who's not going out of business, which is like, it's a pretty interesting story. And we're going to have them on the podcast. So we won't, we won't spoil all the surprises, but um, yeah, it was basically a strategic move by them to kind of refocus their portfolio. Yeah. Well, the interesting part is, I mean, I think there's some positive things to a transaction like this. It's cradle to grave, right? So this was actually start off as land. They wow. built the building. Wow. They built out the space. They built it. it up. Was it purpose built for flex? Uh huh. Okay. So interesting enough. So Fuse, the seller um, who has a space in Austin and another one in Houston, and we've got a couple other buildings under contract in Austin as well, is a hotel developer. And so this idea came about because he moved out here and without telling all his story. So when he comes in, he gets to share part of it, but ultimately saw the need and demand. And at first he was like, can this full building really be co-working? And so yeah. he left the top floor unfinished in case the first two floors didn't do well, he could try to get a traditional tenant and he yeah. crushed it. And so he built out the, the third floor. Um, and ultimately the, the Caddo guys who hopefully we'll get on to basically Came, came knocking. They've been looking in the area. Mike and the Fuse team wanted to focus on on Austin and, and other markets, and so the, the timing was just perfect. And it, two two very like minded parties with a very much uh, like business model just were able. To, I mean, it's probably six nine months into works, maybe a year. So yeah, it can take a long time. Fun. So tell me where. Did you play like matchmaker there? Or did you sort of serve, like what was your role? Yeah, so ultimately like everything else is, I'm gonna say I was a consultant, right? I mean, uh, ultimately I had a relationship with both parties, but you know, Fuse is a client, great friends. I'm actually a partner in a couple of their deals. Um, and then the Caddo guys, I was introduced by Charlie Morris to them right after they bought the Jaeger properties portfolio here in town. So they actually are traditional office guys that bought, I guess they bought three uh, Jaeger properties and that's how it got in the business. And then they just recently bought their fourth one. The fourth Jaeger property was tied into a portfolio. So they couldn't uh, technically acquire it with, there was too much red tape on defaults and all kinds of stuff with the loan and but and since then they've built out one two built out two new ones and are in the process of a third one but those guys have raised several funds and are looking to they're trying to get to 50 locations wow um, so, so their we'll, model we'll, is they own the asset is that is that yeah, they own the asset and the asset is 100 percent co-working yeah they, they sold all their multi-tenant buildings that were okay. traditional it'll be super interesting to have them on the podcast because we just had Bill Bennett on recently. Who's So it's not yeah. common to have the asset owner operator model. Um, and I think it's a great one if you can raise the funds to do both. So it'll be fun to tell their story. So I'm curious. Yeah, and funny enough, Tim with Tim with Caddo said, uh, texted me this morning, said he had just listened to Bill's uh podcast and he said it was awesome he sent his entire executive team so no nice. people are listening okay but totally even though he's all blazer and headset oh uh, <laughs> yeah i haven't even posted on linkedin what i feel about that yet it's coming um okay speaking of the forty thousand feet since you get involved in a lot of deals um i sent you a note over the weekend that i had 
a landlord reach out who has the whole building, I think is a hundred thousand feet and it's not going well. You know, it's very yeah. clear to the owner that, um, oh, you know, big floor plan tenants are not going to be easy to find. And so he wants to do flex has no idea how much flex to do, right? So is yeah. it 20, is it 40? How do you help your clients figure that out? You know, for me, it's really understanding the, the why, right? I mean, I always go back to that, the good old Simon Sinek, why? What are you trying to achieve from, you know, what is, what is your goal as an owner, right? Are you a short-term holder, long-term holder? And then from there, we, we dive into the market, right? Is what's supply and demand? How much competition do you have? What product are you trying to build? I mean, what, what are you trying to do, right? And so when it comes to landlords, they're looking to get into this space is, number one, we just had the conversation about Cato and, and Fuse, right? Their goal is to own a, you know, make the entire asset co-working. And it's an operation, essentially. They're opening a business within a building they own. Uh, then you've got the landlord that opposite end of the spectrum, who's just looking at as an amenity, right? How do I make it an amenity the same way as gyms and conference rooms have become amenities uh, over time um, and lounges? And then everything in between, right? Is, hey, we want it, we're an owner, we want it to be an operation, but we're sitting in a, you know, call it a million square foot asset, right? We were just at Tishman's deal where, I mean, it's a 22 acre campus in the middle of uh, New York City, right? So they've got millions of square feet right there that they get to play with, right? And so for them, it's a small piece of the portfolio. And so that's what it comes down to with landlords is what are you trying to achieve and why? I mean, another great example sitting here in Dallas is Very, right? Very, very decided to open Vera Space, which originally started off as a 350,000 square foot campus that was the former Zales headquarters and their model is a flex model but it's a totally different model right is all their spaces are at this point have been 20,000 square feet or larger yeah right yeah. and they get it's basically a big open room think of a ballroom in which the extremities are all built out and then they basically build out the interior and by build that I mean they come in with their furniture that's all movable yeah. their walls everything else and basically move and shift everything to meet the, the changing demands of a client. So they may go from 50 to 75 desks overnight, right? Without having to do any construction. Is um, are they running that model on all 350,000 square feet? They wow. are. Wow. And so, and now they've bought, they bought a second location in the suburbs, uh, South Lake, uh, West Lake area and built it out mid pandemic. And they actually signed... Uh, so rewind, their first deal was in Las Colinas and their first lease was 200,000 square feet to Verizon. Um, Verizon never even took it over because of COVID. Oh, okay. So all I remember that announcement. Out. Okay, and, wow. And their second one was in South Lake and their first lease was for 85,000 square feet to Microsoft uh, mid COVID, right? Um, so super interesting. And they're in the process of building their third one which is actually gonna be their headquarters and another one. But yeah, they haven't done anything smaller than 20,000 feet. Wow. And they're signing shorter term leases, you know, two to three years typically. Some have gone as much as five with the idea that it's not only the flexibility of your transaction, but it's the flexibility of the space, right? Wow. The ability that they've got the furniture that you can call them and say, hey, we wanna add more desks, we wanna remove desks, we wanna add conference rooms, we wanna, you know, do all kinds of stuff. And so it, it's been great for them because it's a great um, showroom for their- It is, but it's uh, also product. an entire, like it's an operating business. So it's super interesting. Yeah. Like property management operate. So we're going to have Jason, the CEO on the, on the podcast. Yeah, so back to your question. I mean, I just think it all comes down to really understanding what, what the landlord's trying to achieve, right? I mean, in a big park like that, sometimes it's going, hey, how do we- how do we entice large uh, enterprise users to come? Because what yeah. may happen is when they traditionally were taking a hundred thousand, we'll just call it a hundred percent was traditional. They may be looking at 40% flex and 60% traditional yeah. now. And so yeah. the question there is how does that work? So wait, so I feel like what you're saying is 
it's not necessary like to some extent it's about what the market can bear but it's also about the product 